Hi, I'm Lynn Langett. I'm going to take you through the sample Cromwell on Azure on the Microsoft GitHub organizational repo. So here's the URL. So here's a description of what this is. Just briefly, uh, Cromwell is a workflow management system for scientific workflows. It's used to orchestrate the computing tasks needed for genomic analysis. Cromwell is developed by the Broad Institute and it's used in the GATK best practice genome analysis pipelines. So that stands for Genomic Analysis Toolkit. Uh, you can use Cromwell to run your scripts at different scale, including on your local machine, a local compute cluster like an HPC, or on the cloud. Azure is just one way that you can run it. So uh, Cromwell and Azure uh, uses the GA4GH TES, or TES backend, for orchestrating the uh, tasks that create a workflow. And there's a uh, Azure specific implementation of TES that I'll show you. Uh, going on in this paragraph, you can see that uh, there'll be a VM host that will run the Cromwell server. And it's going to use the Azure batch service to spin up the VMs that run each task in the workflow. And Cromwell uh, uses the WDL or Whittle scripting language. So I've already run this deployment. There are quite a few instructions here, uh, and it took about a half an hour. And there's a picture of what this looks like. And then we'll be working with this Hello World Whittle file. And you can see that we have a task called hello that returns hello and the value of the variable name to standard out using Docker. And the workflow just calls the task. The uh, value of name is populated from uh, inputs.json file. And then importantly for this implementation, use another JSON file, which uh, points to where the Whittle and the uh, inputs JSON, or in our case, test.json file, is stored. So this is a third uh, JSON file. So the way that you invoke this is you upload this file to a specific a location in your container. But before we do that, I just want to uh, reference, this is the uh, TES uh, schema, if you want to take a look at that. And this is the TES on Azure um, information. So now I'll show you what this looks like. So first of all, I use the default prefix, so Cromwell on Azure, so COA. So the deployment creates uh, an instance of Application Insights, which is a log visualizer your VM for your Cromwell server, a couple of persistent disks, a Cosmos DB, which is a NoSQL database for uh, log uh, uh, storage, and we can use the SQL API to query those logs. Importantly, here's the Azure Batch account. This um, is invoked by Cromwell and Tez to spin up the VMs. And in our case, it's going to use something called low priority CPUs, and this is by configuration. This is an important cloud pattern because it saves a lot of money on scaled workloads. Here's our blob storage account, and we've got some networking pieces. So to kick this off, we are going to be in our storage account, and I'm using the Storage Explorer here. And the way that this was written is we go into the workflows uh, container, and in the new container, you notice we have right now abort, failed, new, and succeeded folders. We upload our trigger. And so it's just trigger.json. And we upload that. And as soon as that's uploaded, then when we click refresh here, we have a new folder called in progress. And so that will kick off our workflow. And of course, that is going to use Cromwell Server and TES to invoke the batch API. Here we are in the Azure Batch interface, and I ran uh, some workflows previously just to show the, uh, the high-level charts here. There's more detailed logging, of course, but you can see we use 0.4 low-priority cores for the last instance of this, and we had no failed tasks, and we had one task complete, and here we had our node status. Uh, so we had a running node count of a 0.2. Um, there is a tool called Batch Explorer, works for Windows machines, that allows you to uh, look at the overhead of Batch as well. 
Now in addition to this, if we go over to Cosmos DB, and here I am in Cosmos DB under TES and the tasks, and you can see this is an earlier run. You can see this is complete, test hello, and you can see the inputs and the outputs, and you can see where the output will be sent here. Importantly, it gives you a GUID. Um, you can see here standard out. And then it's important also to understand that the resources are configured. So this is how you set the amount of resources per task. So you can see things like the VM price, the size of VMs, um, and then more configuration information here. You can also see information about uh, timing of the task. So if we wanted to look at the task that we were working on now, we would go back to our in progress and we would see that it ends in 8.9a. So we would want to look for that. And we'll just uh, refresh this. It's going to be at the bottom. And this is a previous one. It's complete. And you can see there's another one that's complete. So once it's completed, there's a couple statuses that show here, initializing and complete. So ours is not yet complete. And the way we would know that is if we refresh here, we're still showing in progress. What happens is these folders are um, they're logical descriptions. They're not physical folders. And as the workflow completes, this in progress actually goes away. We can actually look at the output of other succeeded. I've run a number of them here. So you can see on the Hello World, I have ones like AF4, uh, FD3, uh, so on and so forth. So let's go to the Cromwell executions. That's where you get the answer, basically. Go to the test. And let's look at AF4. And you can see here's call hello, the execution. And uh, there we have standard out, which we would download. And we would have hello world. So this is the data lake uh, pattern uh, that we start with uh, data in buckets. And it could be within um, this same project. Or it actually, in genomics, a lot of times you're going to use reference data that is available through uh, Microsoft public data buckets uh, and then combine that through computational processes with your own data that's going to be within your project. Now there are a number of additional samples that you can try out. You can see on the bottom here uh, that we have data preprocessing for variant discovery. We have um, a germline short variant discovery, so SNPs and indels, or somatic short variant discovery. And these take you out to pipelines. And then uh, when you uh, jump in here, you can see here's the trigger. And uh, the Whittle file and the inputs.json are just on other uh, GitHub locations. So you don't even really have to put them into the solution to try it out. All you do is you uh, have to download this trigger, and then you have to upload it. So an example of doing that would be Going back over here to new and then upload because I did that to try this out basically. Um, and let's take the GATK4 uh, trigger and then upload. And then you'll see that. In progress, that one's now in there. So the other one looks like it's finished. Um, and so let's go over and take a look here. Kind of just taking you through the process. Now, I'm not bothering to show you application insights, which is actually important. See, there's the initializing of that one. And the previous one, where is that previous one? I don't know if that's the exact right run of it, but that's what it looks like once it's completed. And then and we go over here. At some point in the batch viewer, we would start to see that, oh, there we're using more cores. So you can see 5.56. This um, pipeline example is set to use 16 cores. Um, also, a tip, uh, a demo account will have zero low priority cores. So you have to send a quota uh, increase request to run these examples with low priority cores. 
um, I set it to 25. Uh, most of them are configured to 16. So again, if you want to try this out, this is on the Cromwell on Azure in the Microsoft Organizational Directory. I'm Lynn Langett. Happy pipelining.